Hey, everybody, it's the Drive to School podcast. I am back with my good friend, Pastor Matt Richard. How you doing? Good to see you, Harrison. It's good to see you too, man. It's a brand new year. Uh, we were just talking about all sort of the, the stuff that changes, the stuff that stays the same. Um, so when, uh, whenever we get together, we talk about, you know, what would Jesus have to say about? And then we, we throw something out there. But since it's the new year, what does Jesus have to say about all your New Year's resolutions? <laughs> I, for me, they're, they're going to fail, right? When I'm you... trying my best. I, I really oh. am. But yeah, I know. Yeah. Well, I mean, okay, we, let's just, first of all, just pull back on New Year's resolutions. What are they? They're, they're basically a command or a law unto ourselves of something that we're going to either do more of or do less of, right? Um, you know, I had a I had a Caesar salad today, Harrison. That's how good really it. proud of you. That's yeah. Caesar nothing salad. even had to die for you to eat that. That's right. a strange twist. I had a Caesar salad. So the things that it's, it's really a law unto ourselves that we make, we establish. Uh, a lot of a lot of times it's to discipline ourselves, to embedder ourselves, right? And so right. it's a law that we do. Uh, now the reality is, uh, generally speaking, when it comes to New Year's resolutions, the fact of the matter is this: is nobody does them perfectly. I don't think uh, if you set out a goal, what's going to happen is we're going to fall short. Uh, but does that mean that we don't do New Year's resolutions? Does it mean that we don't do um, laws unto ourselves, so that we don't discipline ourselves? No. Um, I would say that the, the scripture is filled with this, and we hear Jesus talking about this as well, and the Apostle mm -hmm. Paul and so forth. Um, all throughout scripture, we talk about disciplining the, the simple nature. And so we think of the simple nature. I think our confessions, our Lutheran confessions, they talk about the simple nature as a as a stubborn donkey and what do you do to a stubborn donkey sometimes you, you, have to kind you of, gotta beat it some yeah <laughs> yeah yeah discipline and so discipline the old app uh the simple nature uh for the sake of what benefiting our neighbor and so that our old adam doesn't completely destroy us and so our new year's resolutions bad uh no uh can we keep them perfectly no mm -hmm. um but are they good to discipline the old adam absolutely Right. And so, I mean, there, there is a degree of nuance to this because like New Year's resolutions to, um, I don't know, keep the seventh commandment, they were real before you made the, the resolution. Like this, it's, it's that, that actually does matter. But New Year's resolutions to, I'm going to spend 20 minutes in the morning, uh, just sort of uh, organizing my day and cleaning my desk so that it's not a complete disaster whenever I get to work. I am free in the gospel to work in a mess and in a, a, a relatively clean desk right now. Um, but the, the thing of it is, is it's why, why do you want to do this? Is it to sort of pursue the extreme? Like I can somehow improve to not being a sinner anymore and not, not dying anymore and facing sin's wages well no and it's also we go right to the other extreme well since i can't uh, ever be perfect why bother trying it's not about you it, it, it's about your neighbor it, yeah would you would your neighbor benefit from this right yeah yeah so so when you talk about about eating a salad right uh, eating a salad today uh why did i do that well make sure blood pressure keeps in check and uh, keep good health well why do i want to be healthy um it's not really for me, right? Uh, you know, I know it's so that I can actually live a little bit longer to be there for my wife and my kids and my parish. Uh, so you discipline the simple nature and you set these resolutions um, for the sake of blessing your neighbor. Exactly, you're spot on to bless your neighbor uh, so that you might uh, be of service in your vocation, right? In your vocation to your neighbor. And so, yeah, so the, these resolutions, uh, you know, we can set all these resolutions and we can uh, uh, get it all squared away. But in the end, we still need Jesus. We still need the forgiveness of sins because even though we can polish ourselves up, you know, I'm thinking of a uh, CFW Walther. He's uh, the president of the uh, Lutheran Church Missouri Center, one of our uh, 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 first president uh, in America here, and he has this quote in this in this book called Law and Gospel. He says, even if you were to stop all your habitual drinking and and all your cursing and and I think he says something about womanizing, if you were to quit all of that, you still haven't progressed to the point of what eternal life. You still can actually go to hell, even though you what have accomplished all these resolutions in your life, because ultimately it comes down to it. You need the forgiveness of sins of Jesus. But then there again, like what you said before, then do we just throw it all out? And we don't do these. No, we, of course, we have discipline of the body. We discipline our simple old Adam. Uh, we, we live in discipline for the sake of, again, serving our neighbor, blessing our neighbor, being used to our neighbor, uh, because we're certainly free in Christ to do that. Absolutely. And especially once you interject religion onto this, it can't be about you for another reason. Um, one of the problems with the Ten Commandments is they're hard. I, I can't actually fulfill them. And so one of the things that we love to do is we'll make up different rules. Like, let's get extra rules. And so like, maybe maybe I can't actually keep hatred from my heart, but I'm going to I'm going to fast from social media. Uh, 
until 10 a.m. Um, and then, you know, you see, I've, I've made a new rule that I can do. And, and so we, we create all these extra laws, all these extra ordinances. And scripture speaks about this too. The Pharisees were, were big fans of the extra laws that, that sort of lend you to feeling righteous when you can't fulfill the 10 that God gives. Yeah, yeah. So, so what, what does Jesus say? And, and Paul actually talks about this too as well. The Ten Commandments are seen in our love for our neighbor. And how do we understand love? We understand love according to the Ten Commandments. We shouldn't separate the two. Uh, so what do we know what love is? Love is found in the commandments. And the commandments are all about what? Love for your neighbor. And, but again, like what you said, what we do is we, we, we look at those Ten Commandments. And in fact, if we actually sit down, and, and I would challenge us, uh, the people that are watching, the youth that are watching this and adults and so forth, if you just pick one commandment and say, you know, I want to try to do that better, you will then realize how much you severely fail at it every single day. Um, I know there's an old theologian once, he said, you know, uh, his whole goal was, I'm going to try not to be a jerk for a whole week. And he realized at the end of the week, he's like, my goodness, I'm really, really a bad jerk. I really do this a lot. And so, so when it all comes down to it, again, what we'll do is we'll, we'll make all these silly laws, like you mentioned, things that we can kind of achieve so we can pat ourselves on the back. But ultimately, what does that do for our neighbor? Nothing, you know? And so the law is meant to show us our sin, but the law is also to show us what good works look like towards our neighbor. And so we say, Lord Jesus, create a clean, clean heart in me and renew a right spirit in me so that I may what? Walk in your commandments that are good and true and that I may what? Love thy neighbor, love my neighbor in service to them as I'm not only confessing my sin, but disciplining the sinful nature, uh, living on repentance and faith in you, bless and serve my neighbor. God be praised. And here, the law is actually doing its all, well, all of its purposes. Uh, you actually might live a little bit longer with this salad. And, and here we're, we're curbed away from, from awful uh, excess sin and gluttony. Um, here we, we are driven to recognize we need Jesus because salads don't taste as good as dead animals. Um, and we, we then ultimately, by, by grace of God, focus on our neighbor instead of ourselves and walk in what love looks like, which is the law fulfilled, which is a picture even of, again, Jesus. Now we're doing it with, with sort of pithy New Year's resolutions and not the actual Ten Commandments. Uh, so we, we always sort of want to hold the, the, the pithy New Year's resolutions as good, but not necessary, free. You are free uh, to, to pursue these things if they, they are good for, for your, uh, your body, for, for your soul, for your neighbor especially. Um, but you're also free to completely disregard them. At the same time, we're going to hold the Ten commandments that God gives as, well, you, you are bound here, um, not because the law has not been fulfilled in Jesus, not because you need to do the law to be saved, but because God actually doesn't want sin to wreck your life and the lives of those around you. And so these are worthwhile things to pursue. The, the wonderful thing that the law becomes is a light to our path. So we actually get to recognize, you know, the Lord was right when he told us not to hate each other. Yeah. Well, you know, one thing I always teach my confirmation students, when we go through the Ten Commandments, um, you know, speaking of the Ten Commandments themselves, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll throw out a commandment and I'll say, okay, I'll say four. And they say, mom and dad, I'll say five. They say murder, I'll say six, no adultery, and which, which, which is spot on. I wanted to be able to what, recall like this. And then I'll say, okay, what, what gifts are God, what gifts um, is God trying to protect? I say fourth commandment, they say authority. Fifth commandment, they say life. Sixth commandment, marriage. Seventh commandment, they go through. So each commandment is protecting a good gift for us. God gives us the gift of authority, keep good order in this life. And so he says, what well, honor mom and dad, honor those in authority, because he wants to protect the gift of authority. He says, don't murder. Why? Because life is a gift, and he wants to protect the gift of life from murder. Uh, the sixth commandment, don't commit adultery. Why? Because marriage is a wonderful and holy gift for us. And God doesn't want marriages to be destroyed by adultery, which destroys what a husband and wife and children and so forth and on and on. Uh, God says, uh, uh, seventh commandment, that property is a gift. The eighth commandment, a good reputation is a gift. He doesn't want these gifts to be ruined. So he says, thou shall not. He's protecting good gifts. And so again, yeah, absolutely. When we look at it, uh, the 10 commandments, those are good gifts that God has for us. Those are, those are ironclad commandments that we're not to do that because God loves us and cares for us and he wants good things for us. And he also wants us to confess sin when we have failed that. But then that's to contrast it, like you just said, with these resolutions. Some of these resolutions can be built off the Ten Commandments, which in that case, they're definitely binding. But other ones, you know, are, are, are simply not. So again, it's understanding what is God's law and what is also what man-made law. Um, also living in the freedom that we have in the gospel, but also confessing boldly when we do break a true commandment, which is one of God's Ten Commandments for us. 
Absolutely. It, it's it's a, a great place to sort of find yourself here because self-improvement is a good thing. Measuring self-improvement is, is a dangerous thing. Um, when we sort of measure our self-improvement to, to sort of not need anymore. So if you ever get to the day that you just don't think you need salads anymore, sooner or later, you're going to have to eat a salad. Uh, but especially with the law, if you've ever think that you've gotten to the place where you don't sin anymore, you need to take a closer look at the law or a closer look at you. But more often than not, when we really do look at these things, we end up in despair. And this is what we want to avoid. If, if I can't be perfectly healthy, why bother at all? Or if I I, well, if I'm just going to be forgiven, why not sin that grace may abound? Well, by no means. We, we aim for self-improvement because it's good for your neighbor, but we measure Christ, which is the fulfillment of the law for the forgiveness of your sins and mine. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. I think we could summarize it by saying we avoid what? Pride. When we mm-hmm. both law and it produces pride or despair, uh, we need Jesus for pride and for despair. Yeah. Assurance is in Jesus. And so we are, we are free of all in Jesus Christ, yet we're servant of everyone around us because of Jesus. I love it. Pastor, thanks so much for joining us today. See you, Harrison. Hey, you too. Take care.